bound car. He's on his way to San Francisco. Don't worry, Mother. I paid for my own dinner. The morning air smells good here. I'd forgotten. I hope you're going to stay for a while. You didn't say in your telegram. Oh, my, wouldn't I love to, but I've got a wonderful new job waiting for me in New York. At least it's almost certain. I'll hear in a few days. Can't you tell me anything about no, it? No, I don't want to hex it. Mother, will you drive through the campus? Yes, if you like. you, Clara. Oh, it's good to have you back. I'll take these upstairs. Thank you. Well, nothing's changed, has it? Now, why should anything change? Well, it's always a surprise to find things exactly as they were. Father's chair, just where it used to be. He's been gone for so long. Let me take your coat. Thank you. What beautiful flowers. They're for me. Yes. Russell Burns sent them. How sweet of him. So, you know, he's become one of Winona's most important young men. He's made a fortune in the contracting business. Oh, I knew he'd been doing well. I saw him once or twice when he came to New York. We had dinner together. He's such a nice guy. I hope I may have your permission to call on you soon. Isn't that touching? Nobody ever says things like that anymore. They don't, but they should. Hilda, I don't think I'd laugh that off, though, you. Oh, you're not trying to tell me his intentions are serious. Whatever Russell's beginnings, you know, the important thing is that he's still very devoted to you. And he's a respectable young man. Mother, shall we get acquainted with each other? I think it's about time. Just occurs to me that if I put my head in your lap, you'd be the most surprised person in the world. Yes, I suppose I would. I don't remember you ever doing anything like that, even as a child. I don't remember you ever inviting me to. It'd be funny to be a child again. I think I'd like it. Really? Maybe. Yes, I would. 14, 15, 16. Father sitting in that chair, smoking his pipe, looking at me the way he used to look at me in those days. His eyes seeming to say, that exceptional, remarkable, gifted Hilda Crane. And I'd say, is that the way it should be, Father? Live like a man and still be a woman? Get a job, pay your own way, and lick the world? And he says, why not? The future belongs to you, Hilda. That's where I'd like to stop it and change it, right there. I want to turn on him and say, no, Father, no. And I'd like you to put down your knitting and tell me what you're thinking. I'm thinking it's a lovely day. And I'm glad you're here. No, really, Mother, don't hold out on me. I want to learn. Give me something to believe in. What's your secret? It's no secret. Except to people who deliberately blind themselves. Well, what do you mean? Among your friends in New York, I suppose it's fashionable to laugh at the solid virtues like decency and respectability and having a home and children. Well, suppose you can't find a man who can give you a happy, respectable home. Or suppose you think you found him and then discover you've made a mistake. What do you do then? Well, you put up a front. You learn to live with the situation gracefully. If I may be a little corny, Mother, what about love? If you mean romantic love, cheap magazine sort of thing, most women outgrow that in time. They learn that a good appearance and a well-ordered existence is more important. And in the end, it's more satisfying. I'm awfully mixed up, Mother. Yes, I know you are. Have you ever wanted to go to sleep? I mean, really go to sleep. Just empty a bottle of pills and say good night. You know what? I never wanted to sit on a flagpole either. Oh, we've had a wonderful talk, Mother. It was swell. You just closed the door on me, didn't you, Hilda? No. Not really. I didn't mean to sound disapproving. Really, I didn't. Don't work so hard at it, Mother. We'll get together. 
I'm going to try it your way now. My way has failed in every possible direction. I hung up your dresses, Miss Hilda. Thank you, Claire. undoubtedly know. Yes, it was your coat that told me. It's still a very beautiful coat, but the lining is quite worn. I should have known I couldn't fool you, Mother. I didn't leave my job. They dispensed with my services. Assistant buys at 60 a week are easy to hire and easy to fire. There isn't any wonderful new job either. There isn't anything. Father never told me what it was really like. I thought I could be independent, and I ended up being more dependent than ever. Dependent on a series of men. And you're here to stay, after all. I suppose so. For a while, anyway. But I want you to help me. I want you to help me very much. Please, Mother. Well, of course I'll help you. I'm your mother. It's my job. Excuse me, one of my old students. <laughs> well, that's all right. Yes, sir, again. Yes, go on. Why not? <laughs> Do you realize it's five years? Will you be in town long? For quite a while, I oh, think. Oh, good. I must see you, Hilda. Have dinner with me tonight. I'd love to. Is Slattery still the best place? The only place that doesn't poison you. Mr. Slattery is French, on his mother's side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you there at seven. Fine. Bye. Well, back to work, anyway. Come and see you, Dink and I both. How is Dink, by the way? Oh, well, you know, same old Dink. Real estate, bowling league, chamber of commerce, always rushing somewhere. Oh, that reminds me, I've got to rush myself. Meeting of the orphans committee. We're planning a rummage sale. Say, I couldn't interest you, could I? Oh, no, no, you wouldn't be interested in that. Oh, maybe I would, Nell, if you asked me. Well, that's swell, Hilda. I'll talk to the committee about it. Bye now, I'll call you. We've got a lot to talk about, you and I. Oh, you look wonderful. You look pretty good yourself. Bye. Yes, I had a sandwich in the drugstore. Thank you. Charlie, this letter just came for you. It was sent by hand. Oh, it's from Russell. Yes, I know. Mother, I saw Jacques Delisle. Really? 
Jack is sweet. He's just as charming and innocent as when we used to hold hands and walk along the South Campus. Aren't you going to read your letter? Oh, yes, the letter. I had a feeling when I saw him that time had stopped. Nothing's changed. Everything's just as it used to be. The girls still adore him. Mother, do you know what's in this letter? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Russell discussed it with me. Well, he wants to marry me. That shouldn't surprise you. He's loved me ever since I was 17 and he came to make the bookcase for my room. Between the day you ordered it and the day I brought it to you, your father had died. How gay you were the first time and how sad the second. He's such a nice guy. And it's a beautiful bookcase. You know, I think any woman she's completely frivolous and stupid, would be very moved by a proposal. Any woman, no matter who the man is. Well, Hilda, I like you in this mood. This letter frightens me, though. Frightens you? Yes, it's, it's like being on a desert island. And suddenly a ship comes along, and it may not be going where you want to go. It may not be flying your flag, but there you are. I wouldn't presume to offer you advice, but you did ask for my help. Russell would make an excellent husband. Oh, don't. Hold it, Mother. Just let it hang in the air for a while. How do you do? I was just taking a little ride, so I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Mrs. Burns. Oh, I mean, now this is indeed a pleasure. Do you know my daughter? How do you do, Mrs. Burns? It's nice to see you. Likewise. May I take your coat? I'd rather wear it. It's Russell's Christmas present. It's a beautiful coat. Real Alaska sealskin. I'd like to show it off. May I offer you a drink or something? Well, liquor ain't good for my heart condition. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Now, don't kid me. This ain't a surprise. You know why I'm here. My son sent you a letter, didn't he? Yes, he did. I don't need to make no trouble, but I guess I got a right to get acquainted with folks he's interested in. I got that right, ain't I? Well, you certainly have. I was just thinking uh, how strange it is that we haven't met before, Mrs. Burns, in such a small town. It's nice you met Russell, anyway. But it is strange, isn't it? What's so strange about it? You a professor's wife and me that used to run a hamburger stand? But what courage. Well, everyone admires you, Mrs. Burns, for the way you put Russell through high school and how you sacrificed for him and how you made his success possible. It's the truth. I live for nothing but that boy. You must be very proud of him now, Mrs. Burns. Yeah, I am. Now, suppose I ask you a few questions. You own this house, don't you? Well, yes. Your car I paid for? Uh, yes. Any I... other property? No. Just a small income from your husband's estate, that right? You've well, been I... married and divorced twice, that right? That's right. You got a mink coat, I hear. Yes, I have. Got anything besides what's on your back? Now, look, Mrs. Burns, I know you don't mean to be rude, but you sound rude. You're here because you love your son and you don't want him to make a mistake. Well, I don't want to make a mistake either. Not again. And if I don't intend to marry him, then your questions do become a little impertinent. You mean to tell me you're going to pass up a proposition like my Russell? My inclination is to say no to him, but I want to think it over. Especially his bank account. I know he's well off, Mrs. Burns, but what I'm really thinking about is how kind he is, how good he is, and especially how much he seems to care for me. Russell's taken girls out before, and his heart ain't been broken yet. Was he serious about them? He might have been, but then I talked a little sense into him. Have you talked a little sense into him about me? I ain't had a chance to come up so sudden. I see. He'd done this behind my back. Mrs. Burns, you could be a great help to me. Suppose you go home and do everything in your power, just as you did with the other girls, to keep Russell from seeing me again. If you succeed, I shall be relieved. But if he still wants to marry me, if he repeats what's in his letter, that his whole life depends on me, then I shall have a problem. I must 
mustn't get excited. If I always tell Russell I mustn't get excited. I need a little air. I got a bad heart and excitement ain't good for me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Burns. I don't think I said nothing. I mean, well, if you should be talking to Russell, I don't think you could say I was impolite or anything, do you think? I'll never say a word, Mrs. Burns. Well, this has been a real nice little visit. Real nice. Awfully glad you stopped in. Likewise, I'm sure. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Goodbye. I really am glad she came. There were a few moments when I was rather terrified, but all in all, I think you behaved splendidly. You do? Yes, splendidly. Would you mind very much if I left for New York this afternoon? If you what? I don't belong in this town. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You've just shown that you can behave like a respectable woman with dignity and courage. You left that creature without a leg to stand I on. I couldn't go through anything like that again. But you won't have to. You're right. Maybe I won't. Mother, would you tell Clara that I won't be in for dinner tonight? You're going out? Yes, I'm going out, but you have to leave. Oh, you don't. Mother, I don't want to marry Russell Burns. It's all insane. I still have time, all the time in the world. Why do we act as if I'm about to become middle-aged any minute? Oh, Hilda, surely you realize that Professor Delia is not care. a good... I don't care. Maybe I can have it the way I want. I, I think he still likes me. He's civilized, but not snide and horrible like those men in New York. Maybe I can, Mother. Maybe I can. Where shall we go? Well, there's a basketball game at the gym and a lecture at the YMCA. Uh, let's walk, shall we? One marriage, one year of another, and all the years between and after. We had walks like this in the past. And you talked like that, too. Oh, I was only a baby then. So I thought. And then along came a football player who didn't think you were a baby at all. Did you really want me, Jacques? Did you want me? Oh, I wanted a lot of things. Perhaps you were one of them. This happens to be where I live. Come in. All right, Jack. What a lovely room, Jack. Yes, I'm leaving it at the end of this semester. But why, when they just made you a full professor? Associate professor at $4,800 a year. Lovely room and all. These are worth much more. The galley of my novel. The publishers gave me an advance of $10,000. You've written a novel, Jacques? Mm -hmm. The King's Courtesan. It's a historical mm. novel. Nowadays, that means one part history and nine parts sex, violence, and skullduggery. <laughs> Mostly sex. Real tripe. I intend to write one every year and to become rich and famous. You see, I'm not a man of integrity. But I think it's wonderful. Wait till you read it. Here is the design for the jacket. My, what big eyes she has. My great-great-grandmother. The basis of the novel is factual. Well, that wasn't a campus kiss, Jacques. I've been waiting to do that for five years. You came back to Winona twice and you never called me. Oh, well, I thought about you quite often. Why did you divorce him? Uh, which one? Football player. Oh, because we believed in love and lost it. Is that an original or a copy? Copy. You mean desire, don't you? Aren't they the same? That's a schoolgirl's question. Well, then schoolgirls have more courage than most women who settle for three meals a day and love once a month. So the football player ceased to thrill you and you walked out on him. Yes, you might put it that way. But let's not talk about old marriages. They're as dead as yesterday's newspaper. What about the second, the editor? What was wrong with him? Oh, it just didn't work out, so we agreed to separate. 
He very kindly offered me alimony, and I very naturally refused it. You have, as they say, lived, haven't you? Does it show in my face, Jacques? Yes. It's very provocative. I'd like a drink. You're even more attractive than you used to be when you were an innocent child. Well, that's very nice, but I'd still like a drink. You gave me a bad time, Hilda. You and the football player. You see, he was a blow to my ego. And so was the editor. And the others. Whoever they were. And later on, I'm not boring you. No, Jacques, go on. Later on, I developed a dream about you and me. It was a schoolboy dream, of course. It went like this. I had become a famous novelist. I always wanted to write a good book, you know, not this tribe here. Anyway, I'm famous, and I come to New York a celebrity. I meet you. You are still beautiful, but you are disillusioned with your second-rate life. We have champagne dinner and so forth. At dawn the next day, when you leave my suite, you realize that when you left me five years ago, you made the most tragic mistake of your life. But I, I yawn, turn over in bed, and go back to sleep, having forgotten even your name. Is that why you invited me in here, Jacques, to tell me your dream? That's why. I had a dream, too, just as juvenile as your dream about me. I dreamed that when we met again, time would stop and all the years would fade. You'd ask me to marry you. We'd elope right then and there and live happily ever after. Bye, Jacques. Good luck in your new career. No, I mean it. You can't live now. Oh, my dear darling Jack, you mean you want to marry me? You know what I mean. You think I'm a bit of a tramp, don't you? I think you are a grown woman and lovely. And a bit of a tramp. Well, I'm not. Jack, will you play a game with me? I'm in a mood. It's strictly a game. What game? Ask me to elope with you right now. I won't hold you to it. I just want to hear the words. Elope with me right now? Oh, I'd love to, Jack. Where shall we go? You can speak freely. It's just a game. You're a great girl. <laughs> but somewhat secondhand, and men don't marry secondhand women, do they? Especially Frenchmen, they don't marry girls like me. They, they marry a different kind, and with my type, they make an arrangement. Hilda. But I want to be married. I'm sick of being a great girl. I, I want to have children and live with one man for the rest of my life. Have you ever heard anything so grotesque? Hilda, it wouldn't last a month. I would suspect every man you met. Oh, will you please let go of me, Professor, because I'm hating you right now. I'm hating you something awful. Hilda, give me a chance. Try to understand I'm in love with you. I've always been. Give me half a chance. Give me some time. Gentlemen, you do not have to have gray hair anymore. Just one application of this miracle formula and your gray hairs will vanish along with your gray cares. Vanish gray Hello. is not a soap, not a powder, Hello. but a simple formula. Why, yes, certainly. Well, no, of course it's not too late. I'll be over right away. You're going? Yes, Mother, I'm going. Now, don't sit up all night staring at that thing. You know you need your sleep. I'll be back in a little while. Good night. 
Good night. And you receive absolutely free a month's supply of vanished gray. Anything wrong? Russell, did your mother say anything to you? I found out she had invited herself here. I'm sorry about well, she that. She was kind enough to call on she us. She invited herself. Let's keep it simple. I suppose she told you everything I said to her. I doubt if she left anything out. You, uh, you got my letter? Yes, I did. I, I thought it was a fine letter, Russell. You did? Well, there's no hurry about giving me an answer, and no hurry at all. Yeah, well, I, uh, it was a little sudden, and we've seen each other so seldom. You thought I wrote it on impulse, I've been it? called impulsive myself. Sure, I know, if you mean your marriages. I guess you were just trying to find happiness. I can't very well blame you for that. Can't you? Well, what I mean is, you're a modern woman, and... I guess I'm putting this pretty badly. I, I'm not very good at saying emotional things. That, that's why I wrote you the letter. I'll I marry you, Russell. In... You what? I said I'll marry you. I don't know what to say. I, I didn't think you'd accept. Uh, well, Hilda, you make me very happy. I'd like to do that. <laughs> good night. Well, good night. Uh, call me in the morning? Yes, yes, I'll call you in the morning. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Wasn't that Russell's car? What was he doing here? I sent for him. You did? I'm going to marry him, Mother. Oh, Hilda, darling, I can't tell you how pleased I am. I'm going to be the mother of his children. I'll be his housekeeper, his hostess. I'll uphold his dignity and be true to him. I don't think it matters at all that I don't love him. Did you settle on a time for the wedding? Well, the sooner the better, I should think. Oh, I disagree. There are many reasons why this should be a formal wedding after a decent period of engagement. But why, Mother? What difference does it make? All the difference in the world. Been married twice in haste. This time we want to create an entirely different impression. A June wedding would be best, I think. Whatever you say, we're playing it your way now. Hilda. Mother, when I was a little girl, you used to read to me from the Bible. Please, would you like me to read something to you now? Is there a passage in it that goes something like, you may stumble and fail again and again? And the Lord will not pass judgment. He will have mercy. But there will come a time when you dare not falter. The year, the day of your last chance. Then, my daughter, take whatever hand is held out to you and walk with courage out of the darkness into the light. I don't remember anything like that. No. It isn't in the Bible, but it should be. I made it up. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Join your right hands together. I pronounce you man and wife, according to the ordinance of God and the law of this state, and in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And then, you kiss the bride. Am I allowed to at the rehearsal? Of course. Da, 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 da. Oh, Hildy, it's going to be just beautiful. I can't wait to see your wedding dress. And that's it? That's it. I'm due at the hospital, Hilda. Oh, thank you so much for coming, Dr. Joe. Well, if I've got to give you away, I might as well do it right. Oh, I wish your father were here to do it for himself. See you tomorrow. Sorry. So long, Russ. Bye, Doc. I'm afraid we've held you up, Russell. Run along if you're late. You did beautifully, darling. I was as nervous as if it were the real thing. <laughs> I'll drop in later. Okay. Bye.
Miss Burns. Bye, Mrs. Burns. Well, of all the... You know you're lucky, Hilda. A really nice guy. But that mother of his, ooh. Oh, now, Nell, she's really quite a person when you get to know her. Uh-uh, not me. The less I know her, the better I'll feel. Well, I hope you're going to be polite to her at the reception. Well, just barely. Now, I don't have to make with the frozen smile. I'm not the bride. <laughs> well, I have to meet the caterers back at the house. Are you coming with me? Alone? No, I'll come on later. I'd like to walk. Whatever you say, dear. Goodbye. You know, I'm serious about that old bat, Hilda. Mark my word, she'll make your life miserable if you don't put your foot down and make her understand who's boss. Now, look, when Hilda and Russell get back from Honolulu, That's they can... That's too late, and you know it, Dink. You've got to nip them in the bud. She's not going to live with you, is she? Oh, well, I haven't discussed it with Russell yet, but I think he feels under obligation to her, and with her heart condition... Oh, heart condition, my foot. She's as healthy as a horse. Ask Dr. Joe. She trades on that alleged heart of hers just to keep her thumb on Russell. Every time he finds a new girl, she gets another heart attack. You take my advice and push her right out in the street. There, I've done my duty as matron of honor. Say, uh, maybe I can mix business with pleasure and sell you a little house for her. I've got a whole block of houses on Maple Street full of mother-in-laws, and they love it. They can bellyache each other all day long. As a matter of fact, I think I've got just the place for her. It's right in the middle of the block, and she can bellyache in both directions. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did I put my foot in there? No, I don't think she could hear you. Well, goodbye, darling. Happiness and all that sort of nonsense. And lots of it for me, too, Hill. You know, if I were just ten years younger, yeah, I... Yeah, well, you'd still be married to me. Now, come on, Dick. I'll see you tomorrow, Hilda. Bye. Bye-bye now. Wait for me. Hello, Mrs. Burns. I didn't know you were still here. I came back to have a little talk with you. I got a right, ain't I, to talk with my future daughter-in-law? <laughs> you know what they say, I ain't losing a son, I'm gaining a daughter. Well, I hope you really believe that, Mrs. Burns. Come here, give me your hand. My, that's a beautiful engagement ring Russell gave yes, you. Yes, it is. And that's a classy outfit you got on. That part of the trousseau Russell bought you in Chicago. No, I'm going to save that till after the wedding. I've had this suit for quite a while. I see. Some other man bought it for you. How long do you figure this marriage is going to last? Mrs. Burns, why do you talk to me like this? Stop kidding me. You know. You and me, we both know. I had you looked up, young lady. I know everything about you from the day you was born. Call that belly aching if you want There's to. There's nothing in my life that I'm ashamed of. No? When you was at college, you and two other girls was brought up before the dean of women for being drunk. Correct me if I'm wrong. Drunk? Oh, yes, I remember. Good heavens, how can you use the word drunk? It, it, it was an escapade. Escapade, huh? What about your first husband, Kenneth, what's his name? You lived with him before you married but him. what's that got to do with it? I, I loved him, of course. When you I... were 19 years old, you got drunk. When you was 20, you lived with a fella. I guess that's what all the nice college girls was doing, huh? No, not all of them, but there were many like me, here in Winona and at other colleges. Sure, loose girls. No, we, we were in search of something, an idea. You see, we believe that women could leave their lives with the same freedom as men do. We, we thought that... Oh, what's the use? You've told Russell all about this, Certainly huh? Certainly not. Why should I? You're tootin', why should you? Or about what happened after your first divorce, either. Want a few more facts? I'll give you some more facts. Six months after your divorce... Mrs. Burns, this is a church we're in. Don't profane it. I profane it. You profane it. I didn't do these things it says here. Yes, I did them, and I'm sorry. I wonder if you could ever understand how sorry I am. But I never did anything in my life that I didn't believe in at the time. You believe you're a fit woman for my Russell to marry? Yes, with all my heart, I believe it. If you had a son, would you pick a woman like you for him? Well, I'd trust him to make his own choice. And how could he choose if he didn't have the facts? 
Did you ever think of telling Russell the truth about yourself? Why don't you tell him? Why haven't you already told him? You think I was afraid? Possibly. You think I was afraid, don't you? I think you want him to be happy just as much as I do. Hilda! Jacques, what on earth I flew out from New York. Are you angry? Well, no, I'm not angry. But why, Jacques? I, I don't understand. Well, I had a few things to settle up at the university. I thought I was going to send you a wedding present. But since I was here in town anyway, I thought I would bring it in person. Here, a copy of my book, suitably inscribed. You shouldn't have come here, Jacques. I didn't know I wasn't allowed back in Winona. But as long as I'm here anyhow, perhaps you'll invite me in? Well, I suppose I'll have to. I accept your gracious invitation. You needn't wait, after all. Uh, no. Have him wait. The lady says you are to wait. Right, sir. The ceremony's at four. We should be back, I should think, by quarter to five. I think perhaps you'd better start serving at five at the latest. Yes, oh, Hilda, your airplane tickets for Honolulu to... Professor DeLeo. How are you, Mrs. Crane? Jacques is here on business from New York. He bought me a wedding present. Wasn't that sweet of him? Well, I think that will be all then, Mr. Jensen. Very well, Mrs. Crane. Come in, Jack. Professor DeLille, why did you come here? To wish your daughter happiness. May I be perfectly frank? Hilda's happiness does not depend upon your good wishes. Quite the opposite, in fact. Perhaps Hilda would prefer to tell me that herself. But you can do a great deal of harm at this time. You can upset Hilda just as a rowdy out in the street, if he were to throw a rock through that window, could upset her. I assure you, I have no rocks up my sleeve. I think Jacques would like to talk to me alone. Oh, Hilda. Please, Mother. Very well. Don't forget Russell may be coming at any moment. Make it short, will you, Jacques? Oh, Hilda. My poor Hilda. I don't need your sympathy. I'm perfectly happy. Ah, you always pretended so beautifully. Just a game, strictly a game. But, my darling, this marriage isn't a game. You can't pretend for the rest of your life. Goodbye, Jacques. Do you really think you'll fool anyone? Him? That mother of his? Your so respectable neighbors here in Winona? Even yourself? Hilda, you can't marry this. You can't live with him and that grotesque old female. How indecent you are. Just plain rotten. You don't really believe that. You love me. I was the only thing in your entire life you remembered with tenderness. If I hadn't been such a fool, if I had taken you when I had the chance, we belong together, my darling, because we are alive. Let me go, Jacques. You would have married me if it's I'd asked you. It's too late now. And I would have married you, too, if only you'd given me a little time. I as tell I you, it's you. too late. Why did you come here? To put an end to this nonsense. To ask you to marry me. Now. We can elope tonight. I despise you for saying that now. I loathe you and despise you. Don't run away. You can't run away from yourself. I despise you. Hilda. Can I make it any plainer than that? No. Hilda. Get out. I said get out and don't ever come back. Very well. I wish you lots of unhappiness. But I'm sure you'll have it anyway. He's gone. For good, I hope. Yes, for good. Hilda, I'm so proud of you. I wanted to go with him, Mother. I wanted to run after him and beg his forgiveness. Hilda. Tell Russell, please, Mother, that, that I can't go through with this marriage. I can't take advantage of him. He doesn't know what I'm really like. I'm afraid of myself. I'm afraid of what I might do to him.
Jocelyn. You shouldn't have come here. She won't see you. It's just as I told you on the phone. She's upstairs writing you a letter. What do you think I should do, Stella? Go home and let me try to talk some sense into her. I think that's my responsibility now, to talk sense into my girl and vice versa. I could kill that man for coming here. It wasn't only Delille. Something else you don't know about. Something that happened at the church after the rehearsal. Excuse me, Stella. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, but if you don't feel like talking, just give me the letter and I'll go. It's finished. It began with a letter. It might as well end with one. Oh, don't rush. I want you to take a short ride with me, Hilda. Just a little way from here. Then you can. Say goodnight or goodbye or whatever you want to say. Come on. I'd rather Please, not. Hilda. All right, Russell. Come on. One inside. You know, I'm real proud of this house. It may not be much for style. It's sort of a modern colonial, but it's, it's built to last. Like in the old days when a man expected to hand his house down to his son, and he in turn to his son. Come on, let's go upstairs. This staircase is just temporary. When it's finished, it'll be real Georgian. That is, real Georgian copy. Watch that step. The first one's a long one. This, uh, this is the master bedroom over here. It uh, doesn't look like much yet, does it? <laughs> Come on. Watch your head. This is the growling room, uh, just in case of a fight. Can't be made into a guest room, too. It's extra bath is over there. And this is the nursery. It's uh, being built so that it can be expanded out over the kitchen wing, just in case. You hurt yourself? No. You have to be careful around. I was hoping it'd be finished by the time we got back from Honolulu, but anything in the building line these days takes three times as long as you expect. So I thought I'd show it to you now. Anyway, you should be in on the decorating and furnishing. Well, not that I couldn't do a pretty good job myself. You see, I've made a study of your taste. For instance, you like uh, Georgian, Mozart, New York Giants, and peppermint stick ice cream. <laughs> I know all about you, Hilda Crane. No, you don't. You, you tore up the letter. That would have told you everything. Nothing I don't already know. Well, you know so little. You don't even know why I came back to Winona, do you? No, no, not exactly, but it's not important. Well, ask your mother. She thinks it's important. She has it all neatly typed, my entire history. She showed it to me after the wedding rehearsal. She showed it to me before the rehearsal. But then you knew? <clears throat> don't you see? She was bluffing. She only went to you because she didn't get anywhere with me. I told her off. I guess I was pretty rough with her. I uh, never treated her like that before. We've always been very close. You see, when I was a kid, we had it pretty tough. But Mother kept us going until I was old enough to help. That's why I'll never let her down, no matter how badly she behaved. 
But this is going to be our life. Yours and mine. And nobody's going to come between us. Nobody. And the, the past, it just never happened. Do you understand? It never happened. Mr. Small, you're early. Well, you can't be too early when you're driving the bride. Tell them I'm here, honey. Don't you honey me. They'll be out when they're ready. All right. Mrs. Crane, the car is here. Thank you, Clara. Will you keep the plane tickets, Mother? Oh, yes, I'll give them to Mr. Small. That'll be the safest. He'll be driving to the airport after the reception. I've got your bouquet, Miss Hilda. I've had it in the refrigerator. Thank you, Clara. My, you look lovely. A real starry-eyed bride. I feel sort of starry-eyed. I want to talk to you and your daughter. Mrs. Byrne, shouldn't you be at the church? I've got a little business proposition for you. But can't it wait until after the ceremony? No, it can't. There's $50,000 worth of government bonds in this envelope. They're all yours if you'll just get out of this town right now. Do you realize what you're suggesting? Listen, I got a big interest in the new Burns building. I'll sign it over to you. I'll get a lawyer and I'll find out a way so Russell will never know. And Mrs. Burns, we're all going to pretend that you've never spoken. Damn you. I'll give you my jewelry, too. It's worth more than 50000 Just step out into my car and drive away and never come back. Mrs. Burns. The answer is no. Don't you play innocent on me. I know what you are and you know what she is, too. Oh, you dirty tramp! How dare you? How dare Don't, you? Don't, Mother. I was expecting this. You have exactly five minutes to get to the church before we do. You'd better start now. Russell will be expecting you. My, my heart's choking me. I'm dizzy. I'm all dizzy. Mrs. Burns. Don't bother, Mother. I'm sick. I tell you, I ain't faking. I am sick. There's nothing wrong with you, Mrs. Burns. I can't breathe. You'd better start breathing. This marriage is going through on schedule. I'll forbid the bands. That's what I'll do. I'll get up in church. Shut and I... up. I'll kill you for that, just as sure as you're sitting there. I'll kill you for that. Let go, my flowers. Let, Let go. go. Let go. Oh. Is it all right? Yes, it'll do. Mrs. Burns, I'll get you some water. Now, listen to me, Mrs. Burns. You'll never, never stop this wedding. I've been awake all night thinking of every possible trick you might play. Now, listen carefully, because my mother and I are leaving in exactly two minutes. If you're not at the church, the ceremony will go on anyway. But if you're still in this house when we get back, if you're found dead on this spot, let me tell you exactly what your dying words were. You said, tell Russell I saw the light at the last minute. I got no grudge against that fine girl. I wish them both happiness. And if you should die in Russell's presence, you'd better use the words I've just given you. I hope for your sake that you can remember them. I'm dying. I am dying. You're not going to die, Mrs. Burns. I was just playing a little game with you in case it occurred to you to die out of spite. But you're not going to die. You're much too selfish. If I were the first woman that you tried to liquidate in Russell's life, you might have had a chance. But this is an old game of yours, and today is just one time too many. So pull yourself together like a brave little soldier. Attend this wedding and smile. Let's go, Mother. Right. Take care of Mrs. Brains. Oh, Mother, what am I turning into? What am I becoming? I'm 
terribly sorry. The wedding reception has been called off. Mrs. Burns has been taken ill. I'm terribly sorry. Would you please spread the word? The reception is called off. Is there any word yet? No, Russell's in there with Dr. Jones. I cancelled your plane reservations for tonight, and I'll wire the Moana in the morning. Yes, Mother. Hilda, please don't. Mother, there's nothing you could say that would make me like myself any better right now. Oh, Russell. Take him home, Hilda. There was nothing anyone could do. You'd better get some rest, both of you. Yes, Doc. Hello, Nell. The girl said you'd be right back, so I took a chance and waited. I'm glad you did. Come on in. Would you like a drink? Oh, yes, but just a short one. I can only stay a minute. Scotch on the rocks if you have it, please. You know, you look tired, Hilda. When are you and Russell going on that wedding trip? Oh, it's a little late for wedding trips, don't you think? After five months? Oh, you ought to get away, both of you, out of this house. Well, we couldn't at first, the funeral and all the arrangements and so forth, and Russell's been busy. You know. We haven't been seeing enough of each other lately, Nell. Tell me what's new. Well, I suppose you know who's back in town. Yes, I saw it in the paper. He's lecturing at our club tomorrow afternoon. You want to come with me? No. Nope. You know, Jacques always did give a good lecture, and now that he's a celebrity, I understand he's really something. Oh, how he does thrive on that public attention. Why don't you come with me? Just for laughs. I can't, Nell. Russell and I have an engagement. Well, I thought I'd give it a try. You were always so fond of him. Oh, goodness, I better be running. I... Hilda, do you mind if I say something? You and Russell shouldn't go on living in this, this chamber of horrors. Why didn't he finish the new house anyway? Well, it didn't make sense after Mrs. Burns died to build and furnish a new place when we already had this one. This is a perfectly good house. There's no reason to move out of it. Mm. And a perfectly good reason from Russell's point of view for staying in it. What do you mean? Russell was horrid to Mama. Mama died. Now Russell's going to be a good boy again and stay right here where Mama can keep an eye on him. Ooh, what an eye. Like a stuffed crocodile. Would you be good enough to mind your own business? Sure. <sighs> I'm always... Shooting off my big mouth. Big mouth Nell, they call me. I'm sorry, Hilda. I'm sorry, too. I didn't mean to snap at you. <laughs> Forget it. I'll be seeing you. How are you, Mrs. Oh, Crane? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine. Nick, how are you? Fine, thank you. Hello, Hilda. Hello, Mother. I wish you wouldn't do that. Do what? You know what I mean. Drink so much. Russell might think... On the it's... contrary, Russell loves it. 
He likes his wife to be bright and vivacious when he comes home from a hard day's work. Sit down, Mother. Shall we have one of our little intimate chats? You've been increasingly hostile to me lately, Hilda. I don't know why. Hostile? Well, I'm inviting you to stay. We can have a nice, cozy little time, can't we, the three of us? The three of us. Well, that's what's bothering you. Doesn't it bother you? No. Not for a moment. I can face my maker with a clear conscience, and so can you. We didn't know that she had a bad heart, nor did her doctor, not even Russell. We all thought that she was faking, and she was faking until it turned into the real thing, and she brought it on herself. I wish you'd take the picture out of the room. Oh, I don't want to spoil her moment of triumph. She couldn't get what she wanted alive, but she sure enough got it dead. You have to hand it to her. Don't, Hilda. You make yourself sound coarse and cheap. Well, I'm glad we agree on something. I feel coarse and cheap. How long do you think I can keep on pretending and pretending? Pretending what? That this marriage is anything but a disaster. I don't know what makes you talk like that. Don't you, Mother? Have you ever read Ednis and Vincent Millay? She's not very fashionable right now, but I've always liked that poem that ended like this. With him for a sire and her for a dam, what should I be but just what I am? It's too lyrical and perhaps a trifle quaint, but I like it. I never approved of children criticizing their parents. Well, you've never approved of a lot of things, but they've happened anyway. This is a very unhappy moment for me, Hilda. For you? You are all I have in the world. Since when, Mother? That's an unwarranted question. Is it? You're my only child, and in all the years since I lost your father, I've... Oh, Mother, I've never been anything but a worry and a bother to you. You've always resented me because you couldn't make me over into what you are, because I wanted more out of life than just appearances. I couldn't learn to act and think and talk like you, so you've resented me. You've never really loved me. Have you, Mother? That's a lie. It's a cruel lie. No, it's the truth which can hurt more than a lie, I grant you. Oh, you're not leaving, are you? Yes. I've heard enough. Come back someday, won't you, Mother? Good afternoon, Mrs. Craig. Good afternoon. Mrs. Burns. Mrs. Burns. That's me, isn't it? I, I keep forgetting that I'm Mrs. Burns now. There's a Mr. DeLeal on the phone. Oh. Uh, oh, tell Mr. DeLeal that I said I'm not at home. Be sure and put it just like that. I said I'm not at home. Yes, ma'am. You'll get the point. He's very quick, is Professor DeLeal. Very well, ma'am. like a drink? Uh, no, not for me. I'm uh, flying up to Denver after dinner. I should be back tomorrow night. Oh, will you take me with you, Russell? I'd like to, but uh, Gus Nordlinger and I are going up on business. We'll be on the run all day. Oh, I see. I fell asleep just now, and I had a wonderful dream. Your mother didn't die after all. And you and I went to Honolulu on our honeymoon. And when it was over, we didn't come back. We just got on a boat and went on round the world. We visited all those lovely places with names like magic. Fiji and Tahiti, Hong Kong, Bangkok Valley, and the Spice Islands. It was all dazzling blue water and coral sands and palm trees in the wind. And the birds of paradise were singing. 
Do birds of paradise sing, Russell? Do you happen to know? I don't know. No, I guess they just squawk. Say, someone broke a glass. I did. Bad hills are always breaking things. Such a trial to your poor dear mother. I hope she's not cross with me. I don't think that's very funny, Hilda. Don't you? I think it's hilarious. I think the whole thing is hilarious. Don't you agree, Russell? What's the matter with you tonight? I'm a little tight, that's all. Mrs. Russell Burns is just a teeny weeny bit intoxicated. If you're going to be ashamed of your wife, you might as well have a good reason. Be good and ashamed. I'm not ashamed of you. No? You only think I killed your mother. I've never said anything like that to you or even thought it. Then why did you leave me on our wedding night? Why have you always refused to discuss this subject with me? Why have you let this wall grow up between us, this wall of guilt and suspicion, so that now my own Hilda, husband is I'll discuss stranger. it with you sometime when you're more, more yourself. Oh, I'll never be more myself than I am right now. Russell, I'm your wife. I'm alive. She's dead. Can't you forget no, it? No, I can't. Not after what I did to her. After what you did to her? Oh, now I get it. I'm not the guilty one. You are. If you'd never met me, if you, if you hadn't fallen in love with me, if you hadn't defied your mother by marrying me, she'd still be alive. Is that what you mean? You think Hell, now let's drop it. Oh, now I've disturbed you. That's my trouble. I'm, I'm always bothering people. All my life I've bothered my mother, then I bothered your mother, and now I'm bothering you. I, I'm sorry, Russell. Hilda. I truly am sorry. I shouldn't mix with respectable people. I should stick with my own kind. Oh, have a good time in Denver. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our distinguished guest speaker. Some of you already know him. Many of you have had the privilege of studying with him. Our pet celebrity, Professor Jacques Delisle. Thank you. As you see, I'm here as a salesman. <laughs> Ladies first, let me say that not one of you looks a day older. Oh. I live in New York. I've just returned from Hollywood. In neither place is the standard of feminine charm as high as it is right here in Winona. Oh. <laughs> when I left here, I left a big piece of my heart behind. I'm glad I found it again. Oh, Hilda, I have to pick up Dink at his office. You two want to come along for the ride? Now I'll take Jack home and you and Dink can join us there. Good enough. See you later. Are we riding? No, walking. It's not right. far. You used to like to walk. I still do in certain company. I guess I owe you an apology. What for? Well, I was very rude, wasn't I, the last time we met? Let's say that neither of us behaved very well. Will your husband be at home? Uh, yes, later on this evening. Well, here we are. Oh, quite a house. It exactly expresses your personality. <laughs> you must be very happy here. Well, would you like a drink now, or shall we wait for the others? I can wait. You've changed, Jacques. Have I? Yes, you're more sure of yourself. Must be success, it's becoming to you. Did I mention that I'm engaged to be married? Oh, you engaged? Aren't you going to wish me happiness, Hilda? I hope your life will be wonderful and happy, just like Russell's and mine. Thank you. Tell me about her, your fiancé. Oh, she's pretty enough. And extremely rich. She'll never be what you could have been, but she'll do. I want you more than ever, Hilda. Was she tall, short, dark, blonde? You are one woman in a million. There'll never be anyone else for me. Oh, I hope she knows what it took me a long time to learn to 
Give herself to one man and one man only. Let's get out of this house. When I see these women who think they're intelligent, running around trying one thing after another, looking for perfect happiness, when the most important thing is his appearances. Decency, respectability, a, a well-ordered life are much more important, and in the end... Something came up. We're on our way to the country club. We just stopped by to tell you. Oh, you could stay and have a drink, surely. Scotch on the rocks, am I right? Thanks, but can't do it. You see, this guy is a prospective customer. As a matter of fact, we're late now. He invited us over for dinner to meet his wife. Oh, well, bring him here. I can get dinner for us all. Call him up and tell him I'm lonely and... Sorry, Hill, but it can't be done. Well, let him wait. You can stay and just have one drink, can't you? Oh, we'd love to, Hilda. But you see, if Dink can put over this deal, I get a new convertible. Well, I'm a customer, too, you know. Russell's going to give you the new house to sell, isn't he? The unfinished one? I, uh, I, I think I'll stay a while. You run along, Dink. I'll take a taxi and join you. Now, wait a minute. This guy and his wife expect us both. You see, business is business, Hilda. Beat it, Dink. Okay. I'll just tell my $100,000 prospect that, uh, you didn't care to meet his ugly wife. I'm sorry, Hilda, but that's the way it is. Oh, gosh, wait a minute, Dink. Uh, maybe we could drop in after dinner. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. There's no word yet. She hasn't been here. Yes, he's back from Denver. He called here earlier. Well, I'll call you back later. There's someone at the door. Russell. Where is she, Stella? Well, these friends of hers from New York dropped in, and she called to say... Don't that lie to me. Where is she? Nell said she was with Jacques Delisle. Where's he staying? At the Manor Inn. But, Russell, you mustn't think just because... Russ oh, could you send up some sandwiches, please? Well, if the kitchen is closed, some crackers and cheese, but right away. Thank you very much. Don't be sad, my darling. I don't mean to be sad. We had fun at dinner tonight, didn't we, Jacques? I haven't laughed and talked so much in years. It's always fun when we are together. And we'll be together often. That's why I hate to see you sad now. Is it conscience? I didn't know I had a conscience. This is a funny world, Hilda. You have to cheat a little if you are going to survive. Tell me, Jacques, was it tonight that I cheated, or...? Five months ago, when I married Russell Burns. Oh, you've always lied to yourself. A little. That's been your trouble all your life. You know, Jacques, I've had a life. I didn't do much with it, but I had it. I've never done this, though. I've never sneaked in a back door before. That wasn't avoidable in a small town like this. But when you come to New York, I assure you it will be different. I was rather sweet at 16, 17. Freshman history, remember, Jack? Mm. I sat in the front row. I wanted to have a beautiful heart and a beautiful mind. I wanted to give to some wonderful husband and to a large family of children. I wanted to be Joan of Arc and Florence Nightingale. <laughs> Very bad casting, as they say in Hollywood. Would you like a drink? The trouble with you, darling Hilda, is that you are a classic figure and don't know it. You belong in the 18th century. Better yet, the Renaissance. Because do you know what you really are, Hilda? You are a courtesan. 
in the old tradition. A classic courtesan like Pontadour or Dupari. In the right incarnation, you would turn the heads of kings and do all the queens out of their marital rights. Oh, that must be our primitive room service. Hilda. Go outside. I said, go outside. Well, what is there for me to say? Nothing. to look for you. Now listen to me, Hilda. You've got to let me handle this. Russell will be back any minute. Now let me do the talking. You're too tired. Is that clear? You need say nothing for a day or two. Just listen to me and use your head. Do you understand? Yes, Mother. I think you'd better go right to bed. Don't see him at all tonight. Tomorrow will be time enough. I couldn't keep it from him that you were with that man, but he doesn't know where you went or what you did. We can be grateful for that at least. It would be so much worse if he'd actually found you together. He did, Mother. We were in Jack's room at the inn. What are your intentions? Intentions? Yours and this man's. Oh, yes, his intentions. Jacques has intentions, as a matter of fact. Time to spend time in New York, make little visits. We'll meet places up back stairs, and he'll find reasons why I should be in New York several times a year, and the rest of the time I'm to live off my husband. He's very clever. He's, he's good at appearances, like you. Hilda, will you please try to be rational? Rational is the thing I'm the most, because I know exactly where I belong. I'm a classic figure. A courtesan, he called me. That's what Mrs. Burns called me. In case you didn't know, courtesan's a fancy word for tramp. Well, what are you? Oh, you agree with him, don't you, Mother? You agree with him, but it isn't true. I'm, I'm a woman, a failure, hopelessly wrong, but all my life I've struggled to be a woman, not a courtesan, not a tramp. Where will I get the courage to live through this? Oh, I'm giving you a bad night, aren't I? Mother, do, do you perhaps love me a, a little? How could anyone love you after what you've done? But you're my daughter, and we have to live in this town. It's my responsibility to keep up appearances, even if you won't try. Now, as long as you're here, we're going to pretend that you're a respectable woman. We're going to hold our heads up, you and I. Hilda, so what are you doing? Well, I was just getting a glass of water. I can still handle it. Russell is a sensible man, and he knows that you've been under a strain. He can be talked to. But you'll have to leave it entirely to me. Are you listening to me, Hilda? Yes, Mother. Listen to me in the first place. This would never have happened. Now I'll have to start all over again, right from the beginning. Perhaps the two of you can take a trip together. It's a great mistake that you didn't go away right after the wedding. As for that other one, you're never to see him again. Never. From now on, I intend to have my way. You won't get the chance to degrade us any more than you already Mother, have. Mother, I'm terribly tired. Would you mind? He's here. Now, don't say a word. Leave everything to me. Lock your door when I go out. Do you understand? Yes, Mother. Good night, Hilda. Goodbye.
She's home, Russell, but she's very tired. What are she you doing here, Stella? Well, surely a mother's place is at her daughter's side when she's in trouble. Oh, please, Russell, please. She doesn't want to see you. She made a special point Get of out it. of my way, Stella. Hilda. 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 Dr. Francis, this is Russell Burns. Where is she? She's upstairs. How many did she take? Well, it was more than half full yesterday. Intravenous. Get your stomach pump ready. Can you save her, Doctor? We'll do our best. Please leave us alone with the Russell. Ready? Here's the metrazole, Doctor. Would you like some coffee, Russell? No, thank you. She'll be all right. I phoned for a nurse. The intern will stay with her until the nurse gets here. Hilda mustn't be left alone. She'll be a pretty sick girl for a couple of days. Oh, yes, Doctor. After that, I... I don't know. Sometimes they try it again. A doctor can only do so much. Your wife wanted to die, Russell. There's always a reason. Who caused her to do this to herself? Well, I... I better be getting some sleep or I'll be a hospital patient myself. Thank you, Doctor. All right, Russ. Oh, Russell. Russell, I... I hope you won't judge her too harshly. She was always an unstable person, very like her poor father, brilliant, but unable to face I up to the facts of life. I wasn't thinking of judging her, Stella. I was thinking of what the doctor said. Who caused her to do this to herself? But why are you looking at me? Surely you don't think I had anything to Didn't do with you? it. Of course not. I didn't put all those ideas into her head. I didn't send her off to New York to lead the kind of life but that she did. But you did, Stella. You denied her the only thing she ever asked of anyone be loved for her own sake. Did you, did you ever put your arms around her and say, you're my girl no matter what you do? 
You never did that. You never even thought of doing it. That's why she went to New York. She was looking for something. Understanding, affection. Well, don't feel too badly about it, Stella, because when she came back, I had my chance, and I treated her even worse than you did, because I offered her love, and then, then when Mother died, I, I let her down completely. I, I acted like a hurt kid. I guess it's time I grew up. Come in. Oh, uh, Marie, would you take these down and call a taxi for me? Please? Yes, Mrs. Burns. Mr. Burns wanted to see you. Oh, uh, thank you. Hilda, I wanted to have a talk with you. There wouldn't be much point in our talking now, would there? Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to disturb you until you felt better, but... Will you take a little walk with me? No, Russell, I'm going back to New York. I don't belong here. I never have. I could never do you anything but harm. Please, Hilda. You'll have enough time before your train leaves. I should be finished in about three months. Just about the time it takes to make a trip to Hawaii. And Hong Kong and Bali and what is the name of those islands? Spice. You'll have to speak up. The Spice Islands. I don't even know where they are, but I feel like to see them. What was that? I said. <laughs> 